Um, if you came in late, just to catch you up on what's going on this morning, we came in today and uh, over here on this side of the building above where our, our fellowship hall and kids area are on the third floor, uh, those are Grace Classical Academy classrooms. There was a toilet that the tank above it cracked and has been leaking water and it would leak down and the tw- it would fill it back up and leak down and probably for a couple of days and we have major, major water over there uh, with our kids wing and just kind of this morning getting around, we thought, what was, how was the best way to be the church on a day like today? And... Uh, And we thought, yes, we'll take time to sing and to worship uh, and to teach, but the best way that we could be the church today is to help and to serve and to to be a blessing to Grace Classical Academy. So um, we're doing a shortened service today, and if you can stay uh, afterwards um, and help clean up, things are actually going fairly quickly, uh, but I'm sure there'll still be things to do afterwards um, for that. So we have been, uh, during this Advent season, um, today is week three of Advent, and uh, I, I apologize, the, the slides that'll be up here are still the full sermon, so I'll, probably on a lot of things I'll just say keep going and we'll have to skip over a few things to, uh, to get there. But today, um, the Advent theme is, is redemption. Um, again, if you're new to Advent, Advent simply means arrival. We're, we're celebrating, we're anticipating the arrival of the King, Jesus. And today, um, the theme is redemption. And... Redemption's one of those words that can just kind of like become Christianese and just, you know, go over our heads. You, you, you hear things, um, go on to the next one. This is where, okay. I'm a little out of sorts today too, by the way. So here, here's the verse that we're starting with. This kind of encapsulates really what it means when we think about redemption from a biblical perspective. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. This is why when we are are looking forward to the coming of Jesus during this Advent season, anticipating, waiting, Paul begins this, this verse by bringing them back to that the plan of God from the beginning in the history of redemption throughout the Old Testament had been culminating toward this point, the arrival of Jesus at the right time his son being born of a woman, born under the law. Why? Why did Jesus come? Why Why was there an appointed time? And what was his mission? He was born under the law. For what reason? To redeem those who were under the law. So that we might receive adoption as sons. So what's going on here? God is doing something called redeeming, something called redemption. To take those who had been living under the law and bring them not as law keepers, but as sons and daughters. This is why we celebrate this Christmas season. And this is why in just a, in nine days when we gather around with our families and celebrate the coming of Jesus at Christmas, this is why this theme and this idea of redemption should be on our hearts. Because in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that they might be brought in, adopted as sons and daughters. Advent, Christmas, is about redemption. But as I said earlier, this can be one of those words that just becomes almost theological jargon to us. And and maybe for you, you're not really sure what the difference is between words like redemption and forgiveness and salvation. And those just all kind of seem like, you know, different words to describe the same thing. But what we're going to do this morning is we're going to draw out In this whole picture of what it is to be saved, what exactly is going on when we say that we have been redeemed? When Paul says that God sent his son in the fullness of time to redeem us, what does that mean? Go to the next. In its simplest form, the word redeem just simply means purchase. It means purchase. If you think about if you redeem uh, a coupon at a purchase, you're going and you're, you're, you're using that, that coupon essentially as money. 
So in its basic form, it really, it really just simply means purchase. But as we're going to see as we go along here quickly, um, that the theological idea of redemption is a lot richer and fuller. So let's really quickly, I was going to spend more time on this, but let's really quickly go through um, the Old Testament theme of redemption. So, so well, hang on, let's go back to that. I'm trying to move fast, and I should slow down just a little bit. So what do we mean when we say that God purchased or redeemed us? Next. Purchase us from who? With what? Why was it necessary? What, what is this whole thing of redemption? What's going on? So let's start at Exodus 6.6. 6. This is where um, they're about to, Moses has come back from Midian. He is about to... to um, lead the people out of Egypt, and it says, say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery, slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. So what's going on when he talks about, God? Moses stands up in front of the people, they're upset because um, Pharaoh has come in and said, now you've got to do more bricks. They're upset. And Moses gives them this promise, this plan of God, that God is going to redeem them. What does that mean? As he continues to go through Exodus, and they prepare for the 10th plague, God tells the people this. He says, the plague is going to come, and all the firstborn are going to die except for the firstborn of my people. And from this time forward, because I have done this to you, because I have spared the firstborn of your sons and your animals, from now on, all the firstborn are mine because I spared them, because I was gracious to you. Because I didn't do to you what I had done to Egypt. And so from now on, because, because I let you, because I was gracious to you and let you keep your firstborn, from now on, those are mine. So what does that mean? Does that mean that they had to sacrifice their animals or even their sons? No, what would happen is that God said this, from now on, you will redeem your sons with a lamb. You will redeem your sons with, with a lamb. What is that? And, and that was, we'll get to that later on. But this is, so what's going on here? The sons that belonged to the people now had belonged to God, and God was allowing them to purchase them back to redeem them through the offering of a lamb. You continue to see this theme of so let's keep going here. This theme of redemption, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So you can see here, redeem with a lamb. You know what? Let's do this. Go all the way, skip all the way to the first New Testament verse. So while they're skipping there, here's what's going on in the Old Testament with redemption. We see that. We see other phrases of redemption, things like um, if you sell a piece of property, and the person who sold it, because the land is God's, and God had given it to them, the person who sold it has a right of redemption. What does that mean? A right of taking what used to be yours and purchasing it back. If you have a relative who was sold into slavery because they couldn't pay their debts, the, the person, a family member, had the right to redeem them, what, to purchase them back from their slavery and to bring them back home. In the book of Ruth, as you know, Boaz was a kinsman redeemer. The family had fallen apart through tragedy and through death, and they were going to be poor and destitute. And what did, what did Boaz, what was he able to do? He was able to redeem this family, to bring them back in, to purchase them, and to bring them home. So redemption in the biblical sense doesn't just have to do with a purchase, but it is a purchase that restores. It's a purchase that sets free. 
It's a purchase that takes something that used to be yours and then you lost it. It says what brings that back home. And so we come to the New Testament and and Jesus, the the first time we see um, redemption mentioned is is in Luke chapter 1. And we actually looked at this verse uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, and he, is, he was a, a priest, and he's prophesying when he'd received this promise that he's going to have a son. And look at how he describes this. He says, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. When Zechariah hears what God is doing and his, and his wife Elizabeth is going to have a son, Zechariah sees the plan of God that is unfolding not only in his lifetime but through his very life and through his very family. And how does Zechariah describe it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? He describes it as redemption. God redeeming not just a person or a piece of land but a people, a people bringing them home. The nation of Israel was under the rule of Rome, and they were going to have a king that set them free, that took a people that were in bondage and bring them into freedom because a price was paid. So the question is this, what was the price that was paid? If God is redeeming his people and he is taking them from bondage to freedom through the paying of a price, what is that price? Jesus tells us himself. This is, can we go, can we go to the uh, Luke 10, 45 slide? You know it. For the Son of Man came not to serve or came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. That word ransom, the word redeem, in the original, same word family. Same thing going on. What is the price that is going to be paid for restoration? What is the price that is going to be paid so that a people can move from bondage to freedom? Jesus giving his very life. Giving it for us. And when he gave that life, he gave it with his body. His flesh was broken and his blood spilled. And when we look around, when we, when we marvel at, at Jesus in the nativity, God put on flesh I want you to remember this coming up on Christmas, that that flesh that we celebrate that he put on on Christmas was what he would pay, use to pay our freedom. It was his body that was going to be broken and his blood that was going to be spilled. We have redemption because Jesus had a body, because the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Redemption is simply this, to pay a price for freedom or restoration of something that belonged to the purchaser. The Apostle Paul says it this way, you are not your own, you were bought, you were redeemed with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. What's the, what's the application for today's teaching? That those who have been redeemed, those who have been purchased by the body and blood of Jesus, we now take our body and breath and blood and use it in service to the king. Paul says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, he says, if you've been redeemed, don't go back to an old master. You are now a servant of Jesus. This Sunday, or this Christmas, as we gather around, we remember that we've been redeemed. We've been bought with a price. 
that Jesus came to give his life for us, to purchase us out of darkness and into his light. And that never could have happened unless he came physically in a body for us. And this morning we are going to light the third Advent candle as we take one step, as we anticipate what it, it, it's, it's coming closer. The coming of Jesus is becoming near. His arrival is almost here. But as we think about and prepare, I want you to remember that because of Christmas, because of the incarnation, we have redemption through Jesus. Let's all stand together. Let's pray.